Welcome back. At the moment, we've got a triangle. We can see that. That's nice. I want to dynamically push a whole bunch of info onto the shader. In other words, I, I want to draw the triangle at a bunch of different positions. Typically, this would be a little bit more involved. We'd have to sort of set up a whole buffer of all of the model transforms and send that whole buffer over. I mean, the purpose of Vulkan is to do as much ahead of time as possible. But for a small amount of info, like just a single 4x4 matrix, we can actually send that over at the time. Um, this is the benefit of push constants. So let's take this one step at a time. We'll just run this now, see what it looks like, check that it's working. And I didn't check this ahead of time, so let's find out. Oh yeah, good, okay. So we have the triangle, it's looking nice. So what I wanna do is create a whole bunch of different triangles. So let's pop into the shader and edit it. We're not gonna have to change the fragment shader, just the vertex. Now for starters, let's make all of the positions about <clears throat> 10 times smaller so I can fit more of them on screen. Colors are fine. So we have positions, colors, and then we're gonna output something. And I want to make a model matrix. So I'll just pop over to, there we go. I'll just pop over to this documentation. So, <clears throat> I want to use what's called a push constant, and a push constant is specific to Vulkan, not standard GLSL. So, unfortunately, this GLSL isn't, Vulkan GLSL isn't as clearly documented as uh, WGSL, WebGPU, but um, it's still there. So, I'm just going to search for push constants and... Here we are, these are some things which have been added. If we go down, here we go. So it says, the way we declare a push constant is we have layout push constant, and then uniform, that has to be there, and then just whatever we wanna call this, and then our members, and then we can add an instance name. So no problem, let's get onto that. Okay, so we're gonna go layout, push constants, uniform, and I'm gonna call this constants will be my, my block name. And it's not very interesting. I'll just go uh, mat for model. And I'm gonna call this object data. So then when I read this in, I'm going to read, okay. Get the model matrix from object data and transform the position by it. Okay, good. So now let's recompile that. So we'll just go over to the folder, shaders run the compile and that changes. Let me just double check that. Ooh, okay. Ooh, push constant, not constants. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, that's worked. No errors, looks good. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I want to incorporate this in my program. I'm going to make a file. So go new item and I'll call this, um, I'm gonna call it render structs. Later on, I might wanna add some other structures and things. So yeah, render structs. Now, <clears throat> just, because, just because I'm calling the push constant object data inside the shader does not mean that these names have to match. I'm just giving them the same, na na uh, giving them the same name for convenience. 
Now what I want to do is I want to go, okay, glm mat for model, but it's going to complain because we don't have, we don't have glm. I haven't included that yet. So no problem. What we can do is just pop back and just anywhere where we have this. So just the glm include with all the headers and just go into our folder into the third party include directory, paste that. And as you can see here, we have all of our headers and then that should be good. So we can go to our config and there's two things which will be really useful. That is the glm header and the matrix transform. Okay, cool. So we'll have that. And that is, that's good. That's working. So then I'm going to um, just head to the engine. Oh, sorry, not the engine pipeline. And I'll include this. And now I want to declare that I am using a push constant. So I'm going to declare this ahead of time in the pipeline layout. This needs to be declared ahead of time so that when the pipeline is bound or when the pipeline is created, it's created with the, um, the ability to have these things added in. So again, set layout is for descriptor sets. That's for more complex resources here. I just want to add one push constant. Okay. So we will create a push constant range. and declare a bunch of flags, declare a bunch of bits of info. Okay, so that is all the info we need to describe a basic push constant to send one matrix to the shader. Then we'll just go uh, layout info push constant ranges and send that over. Okay, good. So, <clears throat> so far we're setting it all up. It's going pretty well. Now there's no point creating all of this infrastructure if we don't have a description of our scene. So I'm going to make a scene class at the moment. It will be very simple. Really, we don't quite need it, but this will be future proofing because in, in later on as, as it gets more complicated anyway. So I'll just go make a scene header and source file. Okay, so it's very straightforward. We're just holding a bunch of positions <clears throat> in the go to the source file and set that up. There we have it. Excellent. So we're just populating basically a square grid of points. Okay. So, geez, why is, I hate it when it takes a long time to, to update the cursor. Ugh, annoying. Okay. So we'll go to um, the app and declare that we're going to be using this stuff. Okay. And then in the constructor, we can say, create that. And then in the destructor, delete it. And where are we? In the main loop, when we render, we will pass in our scene. Okay. So then we head over to the engine and we Tell the engine, hey, you should know about. 
In the render, you should expect to get a pointer to a scene. And really the drawing commands are getting recorded down here at the bottom. So we say, okay, um, let's take that and use it to inform our draw commands. So we'll go over to the source code and just fix up these declarations. I swear, when I'm typing this myself, I don't make anywhere near this many errors. Okay, then we go to the draw commands and we say, okay, declare this. And now we, we have a look here. So we begin the render pass, we bind the pipeline, that's all good. We draw, this is the thing we wanna do multiple times. Okay, cool. So we create a uh, model transform by translating by the given position. This thing with the mat four, it's just sort of lets us chain a bunch of matri uh, matrices transforms together. So I'm just gonna start at the identity and chain onto that, okay. Um, then I'm going to create the object data, send that data over. Okay, so we create the object data. We declare its model transform. And then we send that over. So we go, um, what was it? Command buffer, push onto that. And we need to declare a few things. So we declare our pipeline layout that we're pushing it onto. Our um, shader flag stage bits. So that is, declaring that we're sending it to the vertex shader. Then the offset will be zero. And then finally, the values will be, this is the pointer there. We have a, a dispatcher, but that's the, the static loader. So that is fine. We are good. Or are we? Let me just check that again. Okay, pipeline layout. Vertex, offset zero. Oh, we forgot the size, okay. There we go. All right, cool. Let's give that a shot. See what, that's, see what that looks like. Hope I didn't mess anything up or forget anything. Should be fine. There we go. How cool is that? We can create we can send a whole bunch of data dynamically. Anyway, I think that's very cool. Hope you enjoyed this little quickie and I will see you again soon. Bye.